I recently bought a new Xeon D 1541 system from Wired Zone, and here it is. I'm about to unbox my first owned, not loaned, Supermicro Super Server 5028D-TN4T. My first that has a Xeon D 1541. The one over here has a Xeon D 1540. That's the first one I created bundle one with back on late June of 2015. So here it is, May of 2016, and I'm eager to get going with this new super server. You'll notice on the box, by the way, Supermicro tells you everything. So for a corporate environment or trying to do inventory control or knowing all your MAC addresses, right up front, you can make your DHP reservations. Shipped from Wired Zone to me. You can actually see the from address, the to address, and the pounds. 15.4 pounds, 17 by 13 by 14 inches. Time to open this right up. And as we go, I'm going to explain things, uh, including having a machine over the right will help me show you what's changed just a little bit since the first Xeon that came out. It's just a minor refresh and a very slight speed bump, but everything shipped since the February time frame has been the new, newer Xeon D 1541. There's no price difference. In fact, prices continue to drop. So you're looking at about 1600 configured with 64 gig of RAM, free shipping in the US, or 128 gig of RAM is around two grand, and then you pay $7. That's what you're looking at here today. Mine's gonna have all four memory DIMMs pre-installed by Wired Zone and burn-in tested. So again, when I say this is the first machine that I've got in ZND 1541, it's also the first machine that I have that Wired Zone fully assembled. This one I kind of worked on myself and it was sort of my prototype to add the SATA cable, add the uh, speaker, um, which is the system I really wish came with, and um, add a USB key and so forth. So it's kind of my prototype is over there. All right, let's continue with the unboxing and focus on what is in, right in front of me here. Okay, the shipment group looks unchanged. Okay, we have a burn and test result. Very nice. This is what my tinkertry.com forward slash super servers uh, website or URL has is bragging that they do four hours of burn and testing. And here's the certification or you know printout validation that they did do that. So Linux is run off of USB key and it spits out a report saying everything's fine. And there you can see the CPU and gigahertz. Next page shows me how long they ran it for, four hours, and that it passed. All right, it's a nice touch. It reminds me of the days of the uh, UPS batteries that would have a sticker on there saying who inspected it. So, so Wired Zone has been doing burn-in tests like that for years. I'm gonna set that aside and put it back in the original box when I'm done. Um, it's be a little distracting having this here. Let me just slide that back a little bit. We'll finish looking at the parts. I do have an unboxing video from last year, but again, this is the first time from Supermicro. I want to notice if there's any changes, subtle or big. Uh, I don't think there are. So far, I see no surprises. We have a key for the chassis. Power cord. DVD install kit that you are probably not planning on using. I know I don't, or CD-ROM. Let's continue cruising on through. This is motherboard style screws, only four of them with the kind of knurled underside. Not really needed because motherboard's already mounted. All right, hard drive. Now we're talking about the 3.5 inch world of hard drive mounts. So if you're gonna be using these hot swap bays, you're gonna need some of those, four for each caddy. Finally, 2.5. Now these, for SSDs, like this top mounted one here, uh, you're gonna want those. So that's the parts it comes with. Ooh, a nice little wired zone sticker. Cool. Wasn't aware of that. And the bag it all goes in. So for this initial video, I don't need any of those parts at the moment, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put them back in the bag. Cruise along here with opening this guy up. 
All right. Probably easiest to turn the box on its side at this point, but I kind of want you to see it as I go. So I'm just going to reach my hand under the front, lift that right up in front of the camera, slide the box away, and put this down. This is about the seventh machine I've worked on. I've had some loaners. I had the first in world Xeon D1541. That was cool. Uh, while this is still a pre-production system, and those tests went well. But now, of course, we're looking at a GA level system. Okay, that's it. Anything else in the box that's noteworthy? No is the answer. Just a hunk of foam at the bottom. So we're done with the unboxing. Okay, get that burning result back in the box. Don't lose that. It's just kind of nice and reassuring. No fingerprints. Looks beautiful. So it seems Wired Zone does a nice job of boxing this up and having it look very nice for the new owner. There you have it. Got the system. Okay. Now, if we look carefully and turn it a little, you'll see the silk screened, you know, symbols there for the various parts. All right, I've changed the lighting a bit. It's a little more muted. And we've got a Seagate 4000, which is a four terabyte drive. ST 4000 M, uh, sorry, DM 000. Why does it matter? Well, some questions came up about the LED behavior when you first powered up, so why not show you how it looks? So, again, this is our freshly unboxed system. Haven't hooked up any cables to the back other than power. Pull out that bottom caddy. Normally, you'd be mounting your hard drives by removing these two screws in the back and then going to the kit to get some more, two more screws and put the four screws in to get your hard drive in there. Well, I just so happen to have one that's already mounted from a previous system. So, we're going to put that four terabyte drive in there. Got a nice shadowy front there. And let's power this thing up. I'm gonna take my uh, armor on the right side so I don't block this LED that you're gonna wanna watch carefully. And the hard drive activity LED at the second one down there. Here we go, watch and listen. I'll probably speed up this portion of the video because it's about a full minute to boot here. Okay, there's a flicker of the activity LED. It briefly flickered here in unison with here and the second time I just saw. So uh, that's how it acts. Now the 62 watts shown in the upper right, that's gonna settle down momentarily. There you go, it got much quieter while I was gabbing there. Sorry about that, but um, there we are at idle. And actually when you stick windows on there, the watts go actually lower. Uh, it seems maybe S3 states and whatnot, you can get down to 40 watts or even I think 36. I have some other videos showing that. Okay, so there's my new system and it's watt burn and it's LED pattern on boot. And we heard power on self-test beeps because the optional speaker has been pre-installed in the system by Wired Zone. Next, power it off. LEDs flickered again. Let the drive spin down. And let's move over to the ZND1540, the original. Okay. And same deal. I'm going to try to be quiet and boot it. You can watch the watt burn. You can watch the LED patterns. Here we go. Okay, same thing, green lights in unison and another green flicker. This one I have to push and hold for four seconds because I changed the bias to that. I don't like to turn off instantly when pushing the button. So that's it for the behavior of the system. How about I unplug and we'll have a look at 
what the wiring is supposed to look like on a brand new wired zone assembled system. Let's start with the thumb screws. Can we get them off with our fingers? And the answer appears to be no, not so much. Let me grab my favorite screwdriver here. My articles highlight this magnetic tip screwdriver. It works beautifully and you can go in from the top and get the screwdriver straight for doing things like replacing the M.2 drive. Magnetized tip, be aware of that. So I'm just gonna gently loosen each of these to get past that first bit of friction. And now I can easily remove all four. And of course, I tend to leave them off because I mess around with my system. I'm probably gonna put them in a baggie and put them right back in the super micro super server box. Notice I push my thumb up to do a release to get the lid off. All right, let's get a little more light on the subject and distractions out of the way. Let's have our first look at a wired zone assembled server. What do we have? Well, looks good. Got some cable management going on. They added the six cable. So right here, if you were to buy elsewhere, you end up trying to put a SSD internally and you realize, darn, I'm short of cable. So it's kind of nice that we've got the six cable included and wire tied off for you. And there's also a speaker there for you on the motherboard beeping. Now, what else is there to show? We've got the fan shroud you can see there, the CPU fan. Uh, lighting not looking great here. Let me Hang on a second. Okay, the camera light's on now. I can get a little more light in there. And that's about it. Uh, the wire is attached to the backplane for the drives, and there's really not much to it. Here's the red LED uh, uh, cable lead closer to us. Same thing with the other end of that same cable lead that goes to the back of the motherboard. Let's flip it around to the other side. Quick look. Four dims in place. They all look like the same color. And uh, presumably they're all, you know, the same Samsung 32 gig. Around back, I've never seen one of these before. Here's a look at all the ports. They're not really wonderfully labeled. Here's your first ETH0, ETH1. And then here's your 10 gig ETH0 and ETH1. So that gives you an idea of sequencing. And here's management. And finally, two USB 3 ports and a VGA. Okay. So that's it. Uh, nothing special or different about the wiring. How do you know you have a Xeon D1541 versus 1540? Very clearly, you've got two fan leads up here in the front. Right there where my thumb is. One, two, and only the rightmost one is used, with four leads going to the chassis fan in the back that's included. All right, so that's how you know. On the original system, you have only one. i show you that. Flip that around. Original system, I've got a kind of messed up speaker there, but yeah, you've got only one fan lead. So it's something they added on the Rev2 motherboard. Okay, the VRMs and the print on the shroud over the fan look different there too. And this is actually an aftermarket CPU fan by GLED on that one. And an aftermarket Be Quiet fan here up in the top. So just pointing that out that the fan speed and sound you heard when I booted this, probably a little different. A little bit quieter. Still experimenting with that. Okay. But I like what they've done with the routing. You're ready to go. Supermicro does something a little weird in the top. To actually install a drive here, you're going to need to snip off this wire tie and give yourself some slack. It's weird that they tie this off to the side. Really just for shipping. You absolutely have to pull it off so you can route it to the 2.5. But that's Supermicro. That's not really wired zone. Okay. All really wired zone really need to do physically was add the speaker and add the six SATA cable. Put in the DIMMs and fire it up for a test. So there you have it, a first look, unboxing and first look at the Supermicro Super Server 5028D-TN4T model. And it's the Xeon D1541 specifically, as far as the CPU in there. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you found this video helpful. And thank you for visiting tinkertry.com.